So we are so excited. We're always excited to see uh, everyone. And it's been a while since we got together. The last time we got together uh, was in September. So we are anxious to just share updates. And as we do that, as we've added a few new faces, uh, we'll just go around and do introductions. Uh, my name is Monica Mancuso. I'm with St. Mary XL. Kelly Boudreau, St. Mary XL. Carrie Stansbury, Cajun Coast Tourism. Billy Hidalgo, and I'm with the Chaplaya Intracoastal Coalition. Colleen Askew, Town of Oliver. Hannah Roy, City of Morgan City. Mike Ricotta, St. Mary Living District. Lou Tampero, City Councilman, Morgan City. Joe Paul Barry, St. Mary Parish Council. Kevin Chauvin, Lincoln Park. Mark Duan, St. Mary Parish Council, District 8. Duval Arthur, Mayor and Brewery. Jenny Shanks Steiner, Nick Stanley Carson. I'm Mark Gallon, I'm with uh, SLCC, a program manager here in Morgan City. And Sheila Hugh, SLCC, on Memorial Campus. Cindy Cotrera, Port of Morgan City. Laura Bowes, Senator Allwood's office. Beth Shastow, St. Mary Chamber. Vera Jellicky, Rotary International. Sadie Rankin, Morgan City Main Street and Auditorium. Bryce <coughs> Merrill with the uh, Mr. Taylor Ring Museum. Catherine Holcomb, St. Mary XL. Um, and go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Daryl Amade, State Representative for House District 51 that includes Morgan City. Great. Amelia. Very good. Thank you. And we have one more, St. Mary XL members coming in. Oh, Mr. Ah, Stephen Swire with Diamond Services. Very good. Very good. So we've been doing this for about four years, ever since uh, UL, our panel came to Morgan City and kind of set us a direction on community improvement. So we've been meeting at least quarterly for quite a few years. Uh, the purpose of, it, of our getting together is really to come together because we have so many entities uh, you know, that work in our isolation and we're better when we're together. The other purpose is that a lot of things that are shared, because you represent organizations, because you rep represent entities, is to take back what you gain to the people that you, uh, you represent. So there is a purpose, and if ever you want uh, access to possibly some of the recordings that we do, we do put them up on YouTube, and some of them we uh, hold, but they are. And I think for this one, Ms. Holcomb, if we could just get those lights, because I see a few people kind of squinting in the back. And this is a very important meeting that took place since the last time we met. And some of you were at this meeting. Back at the 1st of November, we had people from CPRA that came down. So they gave us just a little bit of a notice. They said they wanted to come down. They wanted us to share, you know, everything that we had to how we kind of see this area moving forward as the reserve. So we called in Parish, Mr. Bo Lagrange came over and he started talking about some of the things that were going on with the resilience lab that the parish has been working on. Mr. Solar stopped by on behalf of the city and talked about uh, his eagerness to share all that's going on with bike trails and other infrastructure improvements that are going on to make this area ready. And then we kind of just, you know, kind of took a picture, but I really wanted you to see the people that came down. Once our area was nominated by the governor, Dr. Twilly and C. Grant stopped being involved and it became CPRA's job to write a management plan as to how all of this will look and sound in our area. So the person that is leading that, Brian Lazina, is down. We were really excited to see uh, a local, <clears throat> Michelle Felterman from Patterson. She uh, now works for CPRA and she was there at the meeting. And then some of the other ones from CPRA, Alicia McElhaney, West LeBlanc, and then they've done what some of the other states have done. They contracted the writing of the management plan to this Royal Engineering Writing Team. Some of you may deal with this uh, engineering firm. I don't know them. 
But all of those people that you see are actually writing the plan. Then I wanted you to see, in this meeting, we gave them on our behalf, the community's behalf, ULI panel report. They left with our little book because we felt like that little book has been driving everything that we've been doing. We gave them the recording of our last local interest group. The last time we all got together and we expressed opinions and we talked about everything, we gave them that recording. We gave them our quarterly report that you get. We gave them, some of them, your phone numbers in case they wanted to follow up with a phone call. Two, you, you know, we didn't feel like they should have to, anything but, you know, real close contact with you. So we were able to get that out. We even started a little draft of what we thought the management plan should look like uh, from a local perspective. So we gave them all these things. We gave them the Bike Morgan City plan. We gave them some of the proposals that we had written. We gave them a, an old study of Berwick down by the riverside. We gave them the old Morgan City Historic District application, the Gateway Initiative documents. This goes back in time. But we thought, if they're going to write about us, we really, really want them to know about us. Cajun Coast Paddling Trails and more. And then we listed everything that we gave them in the public meeting that was held later that evening. Later that evening, a quick meeting was called for our area. And we were very excited because we had our state representative, Alan, that came. We had Sam Jones, who just walked in, uh, our liaison with the governor's office. Dr. Twilley sat in. He's, he's right here. He sat in on that meeting that Brian Lazina led, and he talked about the process. Now, not everybody was really made aware of that, and we're going to improve in that when Kelly talks in just a few minutes. But it was a public meeting, and we, we did have great turnout. Um, but it could have been more. And we're really excited because uh, our school, our school was at Morgan City High, um, because of the future, this is all about the future, and some of the students were there. We're very, very excited. So as we said, C. Grant, Dr. Twilley, just involved in the near nomination process. CPRA is now leading the writing, the plan. Very soon, they're going to tell us who is going to administrate, who's going to be the administration. Can't be you, it can't be me, it can't be us. It has to be a state agency, a university, or a consortium of universities. They're going to name that entity soon. And then after that, as I understand it, what's going to take place is they're immediately going to hire some staff. That's exciting. We're going to have some staff. We're going to have some jobs. We're going to have some people that are going to be doing this here in our area. So I just wanted you to see what types of jobs it involves because, you know, we started this because we know our young people are coming back to the area. We want our young people to come back. We want them to take jobs. We want them to take good jobs. We want them, this is, this is it, people. It is unfolding before us. So, Here's some typical jobs. And we looked over at Texas because Texas has a really good year. It's been up now for about seven, eight years, ten years. I think they just wrote their second management plan. It's a five-year management plan. They're on their second writing of it. So here's some typical jobs. So over in the Texas near, they first of all have a manager. They're going to have this entity that is appointed is going to have to hire a manager responsible for overseeing the staff and handling of the day-to-day -day operations. So that's exciting. We're going to have somebody here that's going to be running the day-to-day -day operation. They're going to have a research coordinator doing all the good things. And I love to see this research that's being done. This research being done in Texas about zooplankton, behavioral adaptations, and avoiding predators and finding mates. Right here in the Jaffa Live. It's just I mean, something like that's going to happen. The duties overseeing the research and monitoring of the reserve. Stewardship coordinator because not everything is going to be paid for by state and federal dollars. They're going to need maybe some donations. So there's a stewardship coordinator that's going to be appointed. There's opportunity for interns. And then this one is so exciting. Education coordinator to foster coastal and estuarine education 
among a variety of audiences using formal and informal. You know, not everybody learns everything right there in that classroom, that informal. It's going to be really, really important. So that is what we've been doing up to November. But then in November, we started thinking. We just have to make sure, because you know, this area has for so long missed out. A lot of times we miss out because we're not clear enough in what we want. So, you know, I have to wear my shirt because we want the near here, here. Um, so we decided to write a letter in case Dr. Kim Hunter Reed, who's just been named one of the most outstanding uh, higher ed commissioners in the US, a letter and said, we want administration has extensive coastal knowledge, experience, history of commitment, and an unparalleled eagerness to come here. Not to be somewhere else, but to be here. So that's what we said in our letter. We don't know who they're going to select, but they're going to be selecting soon, and we want the administration near to be here. So the other thing that I'd like to share is um, while they're here, well, I've lost my train of thought on that because I already saw what I wanted to say next, but let me just assure you that it's going to move fast because the governor, as you know, is term limited. He's leaving. He wants to have all this signed before he leaves. So they had committees that started meeting on crisis management plan. And on December 15th, I was allowed to go to Baton Rouge and be a part of one committee. And I just, this just blew me away. Because it was the first time I had seen the state of Louisiana, CPRA, and look what they called it. It wasn't one year anymore. It was a Chafalaya National Estuary Research Review. So that one year, it's now a year. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Let's just ignore the big Louisiana there. And I was invited to the coastal training. That was one of the components of the management plan. And there we are. We're there. We're there. The, they call us the subject matter experts. I don't know if that's correct. But on coastal training, they, you know, that's it okay. And there's those same people that came down to see us that were at that meeting and they were in attendance. So we are excited. Um, that's where we are. That's what's going to happen. And if you feel you want to be more involved, like you really would like to see the draft plan, you'd really like to be a part of the process, you'd really like to um, know more instead of like hastily being called and having to get it all together, we're excited because Kelly and Margaret have just got some really, really good and exciting news. And Kelly, you want to share what's yeah. going on? Thank you for that update. Um, so as you know, getting the, the near in the Chapelite Zone took a lot of community effort, which y'all have done so well. The meeting that we had so many people at has been talked about across all of the nears. Of, of around the United States, which is pretty cool. So we're already noticed. And um, we had a conversation with Pew. Pew Trust is a charitable organization. They're an independent nonprofit um, and non-governmental non organization that's mission is to support and moving forward different policies, public interests, but really helping with education pieces too. <clears throat> And they're gonna support us in getting the community involved again. Because as you saw, the community involvement is huge. That's what's gonna support. The NEARS want a partnership with any community that they're gonna be in. And so we're gonna start, Margaret and I are gonna start getting more involved in the community and getting out to all the meetings and letting y'all know how you can be involved. And part of that process will be showing up at the CRPA meetings. Um, we're also going to talk to NOAA next week. We have a meeting with NOAA and Pew about how we could be a part in the authoring the management plan too. So what pieces can our voices be heard so that we're also a part of it and not just being told what's going to happen. That's um, something that we're going to work on too. So we're really excited. We're going to have more information next week on what it's going to look like. 
when the meetings will be that we need to be a part of, and we want huge showings, just like we had in Morgan City. So I'm gonna be after y'all asking you to show up, asking you to come, because the more we're there, the better possibility we're gonna get more access here and have our voices heard of what we want. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna be in partnership with them. Um, the other piece of it is to make a NEAR work is there has to be a Friends of NEAR organization. Essentially, it's a nonprofit that helps fund some of the stuff that the NEAR can't fund. So like trips, a lot of organizations or the NEARs around the country have massive trail systems. So a lot of the funding that the Friends of NEAR help with is supporting in the trail maintenance. There's many different things the Friends of NEAR will do and that will come out of the management plan of how we will partner with them. So that's the other process we're gonna be working on too to set up over the next six months um, as this designation happen, hopefully happens in the fall. Um, but right now our eyes are on the draft of the management plan and how we can be involved and our voices heard. I think I covered yeah, everything. No, that's great. Any questions? And do you know the brand is going to be set up like a 501? Yes. Okay. And I'm just going to add one more piece for the top part that I covered. I, that was what I lost my train of thought on was that we went as far as identifying a possible office space locations because the meteor is not going to come in and one day build a building. So we have secured places and thank you for those of you who showed us around uh, what might be available because that was shared with uh, the team that came down so we were ready and that has been shared oh can i have one more thing mm -hmm. so there's a lot of access to information um if you have more questions about the mirror like there's an economic report that Pew put out, and I'm happy to share. The numbers are pretty phenomenal to look at, like what it can do for the economy in these different years around. They did a lot of studies in the Florida area. Um, like one was like 30% increase in the economy that the uh, near brought in. So it's really interesting to look at these things so we can understand it. I, Margaret and I will be filtering through these information with Q of like what information can we put out to our community so they can understand it better. The other thing I pose to y'all is like really think about the questions you have and bring that to Margaret and I and bring it to the meetings so that you're really involved in understanding what this can do for the, our community. So ask the questions. What, is, what do you want to hear? What are other people asking about so we can get it out more? The other thing is on NOAA, they have management plans for all of the NEARs. So if you want to look at what the management plan could look like, and the there's a, a wonderful outline of all the jobs, the impact, the descriptions, and how it could bring what it could bring to the communities, that's really cool to see. So there's a lot of stuff out there. I'll share it and you can dig into details and it might get you to have more questions that you want to ask. And you, and you plan on using social media for that too, I'm sure. Social, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have right. a communication plan. The right. social media, YouTube, mm -hmm. um, newsletters. I'm going to reach out to the chamber and to the city to see if I can get into their newsletters. So I'll talk to you all after about deadline dates and that. Well, Mr. Lagrange is here to um, explain how far St. Mary Parish has advanced the resilience lab, and that just works hand in hand with the a near being here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, the, uh, as you know, previously reported, uh, Samaritan mm -hmm. Parish receives is receiving the Storac funds from the DP Austria. It's a direct allocation to the parish. We get an allocation every year since uh, BP signed the, the, the Restore Act was passed. And so we've been letting the, the funds accumulate because I think it's about $140,000, $150,000 a year. So let them accumulate so that we have a, a sum that we can actually use the money for, for some substantial projects. And one of the requirements to even draw down on the money is that we have had to prepare and adopt a multi-year implementation plan, which we have done. We submitted it, it was approved this past October. And so the next step is 
Well, the plan included three three projects that we proposed to spend the funds on uh, over the Restore Act period. The Restore Act allocation is for 15 years. So, uh, three projects were some substantial. First two were infrastructure projects, which was uh, some su substantial improvements at Fontenot Boat Launch uh, in Berwick, and uh, which in include uh, a large uh, pavilion and, and a fish cleaning station and some just some on ground improvements. Second one was at Quintana um, Boat Landing down in Sippermore Point do some substantial improvements uh, to that facility and the docks there. And the third project was to uh, partner with the Water Institute to uh, work on the uh, and study and prepare a document and a strategic plan for the development of a coastal resilience lab here in Morgan City. And so, uh, as you know, we, uh, St. Mary XL, have engaged with the Water Institute on helping to formulate what that would look like and uh, who, would be, who would be the stakeholders and the participants in it. And so that project is also part of our plan. And there was a, about $150,000 uh, proposed budget for the parish to contract with with the Water Institute uh, in order to go out and and prepare that strategic plan. And it, the plan, uh, the process that they were gonna use for the plan entailed, uh, you know, bringing in the stakeholders and uh, at the end of the day to develop a framework and then they put it to help define the problem under, this, under consideration, determine who needs to be involved in the process of developing alternatives and compare the trade-offs created by each alternative and, and for a solution to the problem. And so uh, it's a very comprehensive uh, project that they'll be undertaking. We have not engaged with them yet because we have not gotten the application approved. By application, I mean uh, this 91 page document that the U.S. Treasury, now that we have our implementation plan approved, then we have to actually develop a specific application for that specific project to get it approved. And so that is being formulated, it's been submitted. Um, we're going back and forth with U.S. Treasury on, you know, additional, they'll make a request for additional information. So we anticipate getting the application approved in the near future and then we can engage with the Water Institute uh, in a contract with them and then they will start the process of developing the strategic plan and the framework for the city plan. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Well, the Restore Act funds it for 15 years. Right. Does it Pay vary out. in amounts that we no, get? Same insurance? amount every year. It's paid out over 50 years. <laughs> the exact settlement amount that DT <coughs> And Dolco and Transocean uh, settled on it. Okay. And so there's a formula in the Restore Act that, that, that determined how much went to the Gulf Coast states, how much went to individual coastal parishes. And so our amount is fixed, but it's spread out over a 15 year period. Okay. Well, I'm just excited because uh, when you engage with the an entity like the Water Institute, and they come and they can assess, and I think they can help. and you know, just the decline that we experienced with the water uh, staying, I guess the river flooding and staying flooded during what, 2021, like a year and a half of that. There's opportunity for water resilience, energy resilience, industry resilience as an economic tool. And we'll have the people at the table that understand all of that because I can repeat it but I don't understand it. But it, I think it, it really speaks volumes to how industry can capitalize on their resilience and their fortitude to stay here and to operate and to retool if necessary to you know engage a new economy that's built on the future you know just to help them or keep maybe some AI or just you know economic resilience so that's how that fits in while we're taking care of the ecosystem we also have to take care of the businesses and the industry and you know 
I think we'll have the, the hands at the table that kind of see a bigger picture than what we see and where we are in our viewpoints. So kudos to y'all for doing something different. And both bunches, we love, we love, we love. Nice. This, this is one thing that's going to help also. Thank you for making the priority. I have a question for both. <laughs> yes, sir. There, there's a program that has three funding cycles to do dredging and such things throughout the state. I think we've just taken the applications for the second one. I have not seen one that came from St. Mary to do the dredging at the Jaws. This is through the uh, watershed? Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. We should we should apply for that. It's not an expensive yeah, project. We can definitely apply. But typically, that that was that navigation through the jaws is typically uh, the Port of West St. Mary, and I'll get with David and see if we should the parish should apply or the port wants to apply. I think the parish needs to apply. Okay. Thanks. It's Good not a, it's it's I don't think it's an expensive project, but it does take two percent of the water that normally would come through here and it goes out there to George. Okay. Hey, and we're, we're in the middle of that hydro study on the West End and the dredging of the jaws is one of the, the modeling runs we're going to do. So we'll have all of that, I guess, scientific data in the next couple of months probably. The problem with that, this program is about to end. Do you know which program it is specifically? It's, it's the, uh, I think they call it the Water Resiliency Program or something. There were three, there were three rounds of funding. Two rounds are, have already been done. Okay. We, need, we need to get in there and... Um, okay, we'll get back with you and see if there's something we can do. Okay, sounds great. Uh, so we're really um, excited. Hannah Roy with the City of Bargain City is with us. She's, uh, she writes grants for the city and they've been working very hard. Um, and she's going to explain some of the things that the city's accomplished. We have the revised, little bit revised bike trail um, map up here that she'll refer to. And we wanted to also thank um, Councilman Mark Duhans here. He went to the parish council for us and got an extra $100,000 from the parish council to help us complete the, the two grants that the city's working on right now. Isn't that correct, Hannah? Yeah. That's, it's the one to complete now, right, yes, in January. So thank you, uh, Mr. Duhorn and Hannah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so the Bike Morning City Trail, so there's um, three main grants that we are working with right now um, that have been funded. So the first one we refer to as, <coughs> excuse me, um, Justice Street to Cajun Coast. It goes from, it's the little section that she's pointing out right now. Um, it is almost all completed. The remaining portion is currently in progress. Um, it should be completed within the next couple of weeks. Once that cement is poured, um, just to finish out that piece, it'll set for a week and then it'll be open for usage. Um, the grant award was originally 90,000. We did get that increase um, because we had some additional expenses there. The city of Morgan City is funding the 20% local match requirement. Um, once completed, we'll submit a final request for payment and a final grant report, and then we'll close out that grant. And then there is the second grant, which is referred to as the Auburn Levy Grant. Um, this original route, it continues from Cajun Coast um, down on top of the levee, or up on top of the levee. Um, and we had to adjust the original route because the levees got topped, um, so it changed the height of the levee and you can no longer pass on top of the levee under the overpass because the clearance is now too short. Um, so we're gonna dip off of the levee and then come back up once we get past the overpass. So due to um, the route changes, that means cost changes. Um, so we did receive a revised estimate for the route and it was um, a bit over even the original estimate. So we are going, the grant for this piece was only 80,000 um, and the last revised cost estimate we got was 282,000. So it is a big difference. So in order to do this piece, we are going to actually go back to the state and ask for a grant award increase. 
Um, we only get one shot at that, asking for more money, so we are confirming our numbers with our engineers once again because inflation is changing things every day. So we want to have the most up-to-date information. Um, we're going to make sure we're really confident in our numbers and then submit the letter to request an award increase there. Um, the third grant that is funded is referred to as the Hellenic property. So this portion would continue from the fire department on to the Hellenic property, the little portion she's pointing at right there. Um, so we actually had to change the route of the trail. It was originally supposed to go a little bit differently, but due to safety concerns of some of the crossings, um, everyone decided it would be better to take it down Brashier Avenue since there's already the median. So um, it's gonna cut down right there and continue down Brashier. Um, the revised route requires the engineers to revise the cost estimate and all of that. So once we get updated estimates for that segment, we can move forward there as well. And the engineers are working on all of this right now. We met with them last week. Um, all three of these grants are required to provide a 20% match, which the city of Morgan City is having to fund. Um, and well, well, we, that's the young, yeah, that's the young foundation. I think funded the 20% match, right? Or, for some of them, but right. it's, all three of them have a 20% match, right. so we divvied up. Um, and so that is for the bike trails. And then, as you can see, there is a grand plan, but we. You know, you can only put so many applications in at a time and kind of working through it. Um, we also do have a Safe Routes to Public Places grant. That is a DOTD grant. Um, there isn't much update from that. Um, DOTD just said they would contact our public works director when they're ready. So we are just gonna wait on that one. Um, and then we also have a Transportation Alternatives Program. Um, that is also through the state and we do not have an update on that one. In 2021, August of 2021, we received a letter that stated when projects are just entering the system, they take about three years to progress to the bidding cycle. So we just gonna wait on that one too, <laughs> but we're getting closer. <laughs> and I think that's all the updates I have. Okay. Okay. Have, you, have you been notified for the grant that goes over the levy and all that, have you been notified for funding? For the, the second one. The, the Auburn levy, we've gotten That's a notice oh, yeah. to proceed, yes sir. Yeah. You have what? A notice to proceed, yes sir. Okay. Hannah, do y'all know um, when they're gonna come forward? It, they were forming up the rocks, the limestone the other day, and then they said, I know the rain kind of messed them up, yeah, um, earlier our week. cars are all parked there, and then they always try to squeeze in, and we all have heart attacks because all they have to do is come inside and ask us to move. Um, we'll do be happy to move, but they try to squeeze in between our cars to do their job. And um, we, if you could just, if they could just let us know, or even just let them know to come into the office and ask us to move our cars, we'd be happy to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> I think we can make that happen. <laughs> and can, can you let me know, the, the project that you're applying for with DOTD, what exactly does it do? So that one has already, uh, that was actually something I think uh, St. Mary and so. uh, worked with South Central Planning on. Um, the Safe Routes to Public Places is the one where it works on the crossings um, and then the transportation alternatives yeah. is the Heads, I think I don't know the heads, right? Head heads, yeah. Right. We uh, we work with safe safe routes. We started with safe routes, and that's been a couple of years, right here to connect the community college to the rest of the the community, and that's that sort of is where we got the whole bike route plan. And so that we got that grant first, um, and then. Um, we went to the Pedhead, where you would have safe crossings at Federal Avenue and Brashear, um, at uh, Highway 70, uh, right by the auditorium, right there, and um, over 
where was the other spot? Yeah, by the police station. Well, that's where I just said, oh, uh, Wyandotte, Wyandotte, Wyandotte across the highway. So we, we got those grants. Uh, we put those grants in. Um, Hannah's been working on this one here to finish this one and work with the city to complete this. Uh, we also have already a, um, a Bike Morgan City grant in with the recreational trails under the bridge and here. This is the one that they're looking to revise and we're looking possibly to put it on top of the Hellenic property levy. Uh, that's something that Hannah's going to work with in rewriting that grant. And what's great about, about this is this has all been going on before the ANIR, the Atchafalai National Western Research Reserve was even in the, 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 our sites. So we have a plan. Amelia is working on a bike trail. Bia Vista is working on a bike trail. Hope, and we went to a meeting with Carrie where um, a, a state, somebody came from the state to work on a hiking trail to connect the state to these hiking and biking and walking trails. So people are really interested in this. So we have a plan and when we all work together, we can get it done, especially if we can work with the city and the levees because this is, the, this is on top of the levee and we have the parish. Uh, backing from the parish and we have people who support this happening in Lafayette and Homa and Baton Rouge So the more we work together and everybody knows what's happening the quicker we can get things done um, and Yeah, that's what's the estimate on, on, on your application? What? I'm sorry for the safe routes. Yeah. I think that one is the 435,000 that's the one that DOTD said they're going to call you back. <laughs> they're helping yes, us with. Um, yeah. um, and I will say, though, for as far as the rec trails grants, the first three grants I was describing, um, <clears throat> the applications were put in and then a global pandemic happened. Right. So <laughs> the process has taken a bit longer than it typically would. And then on top of that, the landscape has changed. I mean, it's been like two or three years since the application has went in. Different things have happened, the levee heights have changed, you know, different crossings, a ditch here, a drainage thing here, you know, different things. So some of the routes have had to be revised. So, but the state is working with us and they're very responsive to working with rerouting some of the things due to things out of our control. Mm -hmm. My last question, do you have a name of someone at the OTD you talked to? Yes, sir, Laura Riggs. Who? Laura Riggs is in charge what? of the state routes. That's safe routes, yeah. Safe routes and Mike is, Retro. But yeah, um, but but this is really important. I think Hannah, Hannah's been working so hard on this and and coming getting up to date with it and and uh, I, I think after we meet, we all need to get back to the table and see how the levy and the parish how we can all work together to consolidate our efforts and get some funding um, that might help to keep the levies maintained. Also with our bike trails, you know that's that would be that's a great opportunity. Uh, especially with the resilience lab, studying all those things. Yeah. No, I'll just say what a great opportunity for the South Asian community because that part is funded. We just have to walk mm -hmm. through the process, but they have awarded that. And your students participated in that survey where they mm -hmm. said they don't like walking in the street. There is no sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to say from a tourism perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, back in the day, Lafouche and Homa didn't have as many hotel rooms, um, particularly Lafouche, and now they do have a lot more hotel rooms. And I think that this will help to keep those people who want to stay active, they end their, their day at five or six, and they're able to get on these trails and walk and, and ride their bikes. And I think that really enhances uh, the quality of life. All right, uh, and we're lucky, Stephen. Steven Swiber, who is with St. Mary XL, is going to update us on our um, progress with the Atchafalaya Coastal, the Atchafalaya Coastal Science and Maritime High School uh, effort that we are pursuing. Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I've been uh, heading up a, a group effort here to, uh, to research the possibility of the Atchafalaya Coastal Science and Maritime High School. As we saw the near, when it comes here, we'll have an education director. Uh, so we think that the, you know, the near's arrival and the economy and education and the ability of people to stay and thrive here is all interconnected to this goal 
of potentially having a, uh, a residential component, but also ability for people to access this, uh, a, a, a maritime high school that's located in Morgan City and, uh, and dedicated to uh, a combination of hands-on learning experiences, technical education, career readiness, recreational enjoyment of our area. Uh, and just a, this is a quick thought, uh, the, the fastest growing towns in uh, America, not the cities, but the towns, are places with uh, regular outdoor recreational access for its people. And a lot of people uh, can graduate from high school here, but still not really know how to operate a boat on the waterways. You know, I think Maritime High School, you would learn boating along with your driving set, because it's kind of important to living here and staying here, that you be able to, to communicate with the environment around you and interact with it so that you, you feel like this is your community as well and that you're part of the traditions that are, that are here, even if you come here from somewhere else and you come to work at the near. Uh, so we know that the uh, you know economic development, workforce skill gap, uh, the, the new generation, there's a, from offshore wind to, uh, to coastal restoration, to whatever the next things to do with energy in this area are, and oil and gas, there, there's a lot of um, careers that uh, and opportunities that people will have to stay here and engage with the coast. And that's gonna be the idea behind the Maritime School, to bring people here and try to keep them here and grow our community. Uh, the Maritime School, as we envision it, would be a, a its own school district. It would not be under the St. Mary Parish School Board. There are a few special school districts that operate throughout the state that have served as a model to us. It includes LSMSA, and includes the newest one, which is Thrive Academy out of Baton Rouge. Uh, other special school districts in the state include the, uh, the School for the uh, uh, Deaf and Visually Impaired in Baton Rouge, NOCA in, uh, in New Orleans, that's the one for the Creative and Culinary Arts, and uh, there's one more like, at the moment, but we've, we've kind of, we've looked at the, you know, the budgets that these, that these schools have employed and the legislation, <coughs> most importantly the legislation that allowed those schools to move forward. And we're trying to use those as a model, and right now what we're, we're doing is we're getting together, and, and, and Monica's been great at uh, drafting anything that we need to, uh, to bring to our delegation and ask for delegation so we have something to, uh, to go into the session with, something that we can ask the legislature for. Uh, and what that would include at this time would be uh, something establishing the legislature's intent to start a special school district. Uh, for a maritime school located in Oregon City, and then an administrator to help us, you know, someone full time to really craft that curriculum because there's a lot that should be involved there from your traditional education, you know, how do you learn math, science, English, writing, arithmetic through a coastal lens, but also bring in some of that technical education, partner with the people that are already here, like SLCC, and get those opportunities so that you have a technical career track there as well as a college bound track. You know, it's not going to be a, it's not a technical school, but it's going to be something that that'll have both options to do that. And I think that's something that, that a lot of schools have done pretty successfully. So it's not we're not tailing new ground there. Uh, so what we're going to probably ask for in uh, hopefully ask for this session would be uh, an administrator to craft that curriculum, craft those operation reports, those budgets, and then. Uh, hopefully, while we have these budget surpluses in the uh, in the state general fund, we'll, we'll have the opportunity to come back and say, okay, this is exactly what we need to get going. Yes. I want to say thank you. I'm very excited to be here. I'm Anthony with the with the community college. Fantastic. But I just wanted to reiterate the importance of what you said is that uh, make sure that how we leverage you what we have in the infrastructure together because that, that's one of the things I think is important in our region is that with the maritime school that we have here how do we leverage it instead of recreating a dual yes absolutely I mean when, when I was in high school you know the, the people that were taking their classes through SLCC by the time they graduated it, those are the people there's a lot of people that stayed here and do much for their careers so that would be our hope with the uh, maritime high school as well to get people into those doors and into those programs that already exist 100% uh, I'd like to say too, um, I'm here with Don uh, Nichols, and uh, one of the things I'd like to mention is that we've just recently hired a new uh, executive director for the Body Region Incubator. I know a lot of folks in this room have already had those kinds of hits. It's all over with the university, so we've hired someone recently there. She she comes to us from uh, the St. James Parish School System and has, you know, has extensive experience with great creating curriculums. 
and we two partner with uh, the community college and a lot of folks in this room. So if, if there's any assistance or anything you need, but one thing I'd like to add is I see a few topics here that are on the agenda, and I think that it would be important to get Lisa in with a bunch of you guys to have a conversation on how we can all work together. Yes, we're trying to call everybody Lisa Cleaver. Yes, thank so you. Your business card, I'm in it, I can set it up. I know um, before Kevin had met with a few people, we saw it was in the trunk. But we do want to continue the conversation, and uh, I think a lot can happen from those. Oh, yeah, she's done that. Absolutely. So that's wonderful. Thank you, Jenny, because that's what it's all about. Because we don't need all this recreation. We want to funnel, we want to transition, we want, you know, if they decide to take some of the courses, I know we all are, you know, moving ahead in many things that y'all are offering. I just saw some things that y'all did with Geomatic, she just got a big donation. These are all the kind of careers that our, our students would benefit from. And we're also going to stand up for the K through 12 system that's already in operation, both public and parochial. And you heard Kevin very carefully say it's not a, well, he didn't say that, he said it was a special school. One of the things he didn't say is it's absolutely not a charter school. Charter schools compete with the education that you have going on already. And we don't want to compete. We don't want to compete. We're the same people. We want our kids to have the best, whatever that best is. And it's a win-win situation for the public system, the parochial system, and the special school system. It's a win-win. And Evan Woodrow kind of sent us his report. You know where Evan is. He's in Washington. Of course. <laughs> but he sent us his report, and his report is wonderful. Uh, he did um, an economic assessment of what this could mean for our area. Everybody has that. Everybody has you all have that copy if, if you came in. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at it over 10 years. He said he could have a 100, possibly a $100 million economic impact. And the part that I like, and Ms. Representative Amadei, you met with us early on this because you serve on the Louisiana School. I want y'all to know that she's actually on board of Louisiana School in Natchitoches, a special school. And she shared with us, you know, their pains of getting started and how they've continued to grow. So they have, they are up fully operational with 92 jobs there. And you know, if you think about it, whenever you get 92 people that are fully operational, they have spouses. What are those spouses do? Some of them might be K through nine teachers. They 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 could be in our public school system, our public school system. So you're bringing people into the area, much like the oil field did back when this was uh, you know, primarily a hunter's paradise. You know, the oil field brought in a new wave of people. Education and becoming an epi epicenter for K-12 <laughs> education could be our forte, could be what we do best. Because historically, our schools have done a tremendous job of educating our youth, historically. And we can continue that by the influx of students from other areas who want to do, as Mr. Swiber said, the water. You know, there's something about that lure that, you know, really engages students, and that's what we want. So 92 jobs, and, you know, he looked at all the things that he looks at, and I won't even pretend to, you know, say how he got his, his economic impact. Look, the 92 jobs is what is currently taking place at the school in Natchitoches that does not borrow faculty from Natchitoches, from NSU. We think it makes other professors and we want to teach a couple of classes. It's not. They don't do that. It's, it's 92 jobs, 45 of which have college degrees. So it, it could be a huge impact here with the right exploration. And here's uh, Evans. He said, you know, it could even be more or less but it also would bring in, you know, those taxes to our public school districts. Um, great sales tax, families have to live, um, you know, everything that's good there. So we've been the exploration, chatted with um, the director, Dr. Horton, at the Macintosh School. We've chatted with Beryl, who serves on board. We've chatted with other people that uh, nonprofits that Stephen has reached out to. We've chatted with Sam and a few business people, but it would be a school dedicated to the water, transitioning into the community college, transitioning into the four-year university, 
and it's win, 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 and not stealing from our system. And there are some um, school board people that would like to have been here today, but they can't, and a separate meeting is going to be set up with them. So we are, you know, they got to be at the table. You know, say what their fears are. Say, you know, one of them tell me, I, I can't take any more competition from anybody. It's like, it's not going to be confusing. So we just have to sit down and kind of figure how we all win, win, win with this. And the uh, another thing we've had, we've looked at a lot, there's a lot of maritime high schools throughout the United States. We're not, again, we're not doing anything entirely new here. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a court school in New York, there's a, there's a maritime school in Connecticut, there's new maritime schools popping up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, in Portland, I think is where they, they just started one day, we were looking at what they were doing curriculum-wise. So uh, it, it's kind of something that has been beneficial enough for people to do for a long time on the East Coast. They're now finding it beneficial to do on the West Coast and for good new schools. We have, we have a big gap that we don't have one here, that we don't have one in Louisiana. Coast. And one of the things that go along when you have that residential component, those students go home because it's summertime. There's you have a great opportunity to bring in summer camps. It could be the Manning Passion Academy, it could be the Manning Coastal Studies Academy, all summer long where those students come in and it's residential. They can stay a week and engage and learn about the year and all the other things because we'll have an education coordinator whose job is to do those day to day and we'll have plenty of kids getting the Chapala education. I just, I just want to say, we're not in competition, so we wouldn't be asking for the movement of funds yeah. for the kids from the public school system, which is a huge movement right now in so many places. So what, would there be any type of scholarship or funding opportunities available for these kids to be able to attend without having to pull from the public school system? I think they're going to pull from the public school system. The funding. But it won't, it won't be. It'll be, be those state and the dollars. It's state, not parish. Okay. When you have, let's say. I'm just like, asking. No, it's a good question. Because yeah. It's all about the money. And when you touch on the money, that's where people want to go. Right. So let's suppose you have 92 jobs. That's 92 families. They have children. And if you say, you know, the average children per family is 1.5, let's just say that. Here's the opportunity for 138 new people. Mm -hmm. Let's say only 38 of them want to even think about the school from this area, mm -hmm. or even think about they're in grades 10, 11, 12. Where are the kids going to go to school if they're in first grade? Public schools. Right. Where are they going to go if they're in fifth grade? Public or school. Where are they going to go? So you have opportunity to capture all those mm -hmm. dollars back. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that makes it win, win, and dollars, and that's the kind of conversation you have to have. Now, I just want to make sure that they right. have the money to be able to go if they want to go, which is why I wasn't saying it was a yeah. foundation, okay. I'm sure, and there's other things that will happen to make it all work. If, if it exceeds what the allotment is for the MFA. Yeah, like the outset, the same model goal would be to establish a foundation that supports mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and hopefully you get all the money that you need from, from, from the state and from on high, but uh, there are probably other little things that help. The foundation is always nice as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and our community has been participating in the, the, the workshops, it. right, flood mitigation workshops. This is in this one's here at the auditorium. Uh, and then we also met in Stevensville. But what was really interesting about the workshops was when the community leaders and our uh, levy district and our port commission and our mayors and our city leaders all and, and, and our community, uh, we started talking about the disparities in the flood insurance program and just the elevation uh, numbers that all off and, and how hard it is to get people to even be able to get a mortgage now because of flood insurance. So um, we the, uh, we had the Water Institute people here. Um, Scott Hemerly was here. Dave Johnson was here um, from Indiana. Large part yes. of the coastal master plan. Right. This person right here, Dave Johnson. Yeah, so right. Our, our local people are talking to him. Right. To but, but we still, it's very slow. We haven't heard anything back yet. But um, I think them hearing Charlie and Mike and the mayors and, and just, yeah, Mark, just hearing people, Lou, talk about the problems and, and uh, Mr. Berg, uh, I think opened their eyes to some issues that they hadn't thought about. So that was really good. So there's really no update other than thank you. Uh, hope you you know, recognize the great knowledge that they brought and they really laid into it and they expressed a lot of the um, frustrations with insurance. Just number six. Oh. And then, um, and this, um, well, the floating classroom request, did you want to talk about that? We wrote the uh, Chaffee National Heritage uh, Grants, um, and we asked for some floating classrooms. We put those in. Again, hopefully we might be able to get them this time with the NEAR uh, coming in because that would work right in with the Chaffee National Heritage Research Reserve. And uh, we also had asked about resurfing Highway 182. We had put a request in. We know, I know Franklin has been, um, well, from Franklin to outside of Franklin's been resurfaced, but I, we don't know if that's a priority or if that's happening yet. And um, I'll, I'll stop in a sec. Oh, well, I'll stop for a minute. Anything on that? I don't know. Sure. Where, where? Uh, we're just here through Morgan City, Patterson, Berwick, I guess, resurfacing Highway 182. But we didn't know if maybe I-49 was going to be built very soon, so they were waiting to resurface 182 because they want to build Highway I-49 through the area. That was maybe a and it's something happening. I don't know. I-49 through the area probably $200 million. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a problem. Although the state does have $1.5 billion in surplus this year. Right, right. There's going to be people coming at it. Right. Um, but we, we, um, Beryl maybe can talk about it. I'm sorry, I was out of the room. Catch uh, the the, uh, the the overlay of 182 through Morgan City. We didn't know. We had just we had just sent that request into the parish government. Yeah. Yeah. The city, yeah, the city might have done that. that as yeah. Part of our 2023-2024 um, capital outlay request. Um, it is a state highway, so. Um, they have, we did submit it. It's okay, great. So, right. No, that's good. That's, it's just a little wonky yeah. because it's not our jurisdiction. No, state, that's, but that's good. It affects us. That would go from the bridge at the Chapel Island to, to the city limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the city submitted that along with the section between Shoney's and the hospital, mm -hmm. seven. And so, we asked the mayor for his priorities, and he gave them to us. That, that's okay. right. so, that's where the first priority is on that on that. So we, we know what the priorities are. <laughs> okay. And we're working. Right. We're the working. resurfacing of that little section at Shoney's, not the whole road, but that the intersection should be much sooner. It's a separate project because there there was a, a small special allotment of funding that became available. And um, the delegation chose to give Mark um, mm -hmm. a, a place in Franklin for that money. But in that discussion, they found some extra money just for that little section by Shoney's. So mm -hmm. that should be coming pretty soon. Darwin, you know how much? I don't remember the dollar amounts. Okay. Can we okay. Under the bridge by Shoney's? Um, the no, I know. Finally, the drain. Where, 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 where,
I think the whole the whole stretch was six million. Uh, yeah. The whole stretch was five million. <laughs> But you know, we've been told it, it's drainage that's the problem underneath it. That's and, and, and that's fine and dandy, but you know, that's going to take a lot to, to do all of that. I mean, right now, there are several spots that just needs to be leveled. And, and, and you know, leveling it out would help a lot because all these bike trails and everything, everybody coming in with their bikes going to Lake and Park, they're bouncing all over the creation. They'll lose a bike before they get a chance to, to ride the thing. <laughs> but, you know, I know the, the ultimate fix is to pull it all up and redo the drainage, but right now we need the, the four or five bad, bad dips fixed, you know? And there can be some, uh, some temporary improvements, small improvements, just like we do with potholes that not patch them for years before they ever get to the level where it rises to the resurfacing priority mm -hmm. the whole standard code. to the next topic. Um, a Chaffly National Her Heritage Association grant. Uh, we also um, did the neighborhood signs with that and uh, in Morgan City and Burke and they've received a lot of good publicity and the people like them and everybody's excited about them. Um, uh, Councilwoman Askew uh, has taken a few pictures in front of her Wyandotte sign when she before she goes to Berwick because <laughs> she grew up in Wyandotte. But um, anyway, we really they're all right. They're they're really nice, and um, so we since the nears come in, we need to get our house in order. And I think the last meeting we spoke about possibly some sort of uh, recognition for the communities and the areas. So we are going to ask, and uh, Councilman Tamborell has agreed to uh, put a resolution forward to ask each councilman every every month at the meetings to recognize one place in their in their area that uh, one house one business one area that has really worked hard to improve uh, their house or improve the um, the yard or just plant flowers or just keep things clean so there, he's going to do that uh, so Councilman Tamparella would maybe recognize a place in around Wyandotte and it would go and would rotate every month so it wouldn't be every person every month and possibly maybe Berwick the councilman I know y'all don't have districts it's that large but maybe each councilman might want to take just one place in Berwick find a place in Berwick to recognize and we can start publicizing that we can start to get people uh, buying into keeping things clean and working hard and at least is here uh, with Keep St. Mary Beautiful and she's going to talk a little bit later about some things she's been doing and she might be able to help us with that too and maybe choosing some places and helping out the councilman um, in those uh, those um, picks. So uh, I think that's it for right now um, and we can go on to Mr. Hidalgo. Are you talking about signs right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I had a visit from David Dalfour. 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 Yeah, he's uh came in the area yesterday, and uh, he said he has some money for our signage to uh, uh, for events and mm -hmm. our historical markers and things like that for uh, each municipality. And he was going to go talk to you. Who I think is who? Did he call you up? And talk? Well, he said he was going to. Um, I. I I don't know if uh, I've been dealt with him before, and, and it, I, I, I hope he's legit in what he's telling me. But we'll we'll see. Okay, but he's great. offering some money. No, he's for, not offering. He's asking. <coughs> oh, he was asking Man, for money. We, we just got off on the wrong foot then. <laughs> he, he's asking me for six. He's asking you for two. He's asking, yeah. Oh, oh, well. He's not offering money, he's asking you for yeah. <laughs> yeah. who, who is this? Nobody. Dalquist. 
Okay. He's in the Battle Trail project. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's asking, he's, he's going to be contacting the cities to help them contribute to a budget to erect and maintain all appropriate signage for the Powder Trail that's okay. running through by the Cash Group, St. Mary Parish. We meet with Gary and ask him the Jewish Commission allocated funds. He's asked the parish government to allocate funds. And then the next step is to meet with the municipalities as well. The total amount is 16000 I think. Mm -hmm. uh, parish requests, we are committed 33000 <coughs> And then uh, uh, the request to the Tourist Commission, well, I think it's 6000 I don't know if, what the decision has been. And, and then the balance would be split up amongst the five municipalities, is my understanding. But that's what that was about to do. Uh, Great. Well, I think he, we just talked briefly, and uh, I dealt with him before, and like I say, I didn't get that out of it, but uh, <laughs> apparently I'm slipping. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I'm glad you brought that up. That's good. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, he's asking me. He's giving me a look at me. There's a problem. <laughs> Next on our agenda, um, we are so excited uh, to have Mr. Billy Hidalgo Jr. here, who's going to introduce the Atchafalaya Intercoastal Coalition and how they might fit within some of these projects and possibly assist in some of these projects, but at least today it's an introduction. So welcome to our table, Mr. Hidalgo. Thank you all. Um, so the Chaplaya Intercoastal Coalition, or AIC, was formed just a couple of months ago uh, in October of 2022. Uh, several of our members wanted to form a new group of area businesses and companies uh, to focus on promoting economic development in St. Mary Parish. Uh, past groups such as the St. Mary Industrial Group and the Chaplaya River Coalition, are, they're no longer functioning and we felt it was important to, to form a new group. So AIC is a nonprofit corporation whose mission is to promote economic development in St. Mary Parish and the advancement of those things that make for the civic betterment of the area. Our website is AICSM, SM for St. Mary, AICSM.org. Uh, on there, uh, the, the about page, um, you'll find a little more about our mission, our objectives, and our purpose. Uh, there's a sign up page for our membership. Our membership is for firms, uh, corporations, businesses, or individuals uh, who are interested in economic development for St. Mary Parish. Uh, our goal is to have about 100 current members and we're getting close there we're, we're about 84 right now uh, there's an events page uh, we, we generally meet on the second Monday of every month uh, at noon at the petroleum club of Morgan City our luncheons include a guest speaker who uh, will generally update the group on uh, those those issues impacting our area of business and industry the guest speaker for our first meeting was the Colonel uh, Cullen Jones, a 65th commander of the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and uh, the New Orleans District. Our, our next uh, speaker for February, that'll be February 13th, is Mr. Chip Klein, uh, who is the Director of Coastal Activities for the State of Louisiana and the Chairman of CPRA. So that should be a good one. Um, we encourage people to come at who are not members. Uh, you, know, you, you can you can uh, you know pay twenty five dollars at the door. We do try to get a head count just so the petroleum club can can uh, you know prepare accordingly. Um, if if you do want to go, uh, Mr. Roger Bodian, you can. He's our executive director. We recommend that you contact him. His his email uh, info at AIS, AI, excuse me info at AIC. Uh, SM.org. That's that's on the website as well as his phone number. Uh, however you choose to do that. Um, but uh, things are new, um, rolling pretty well. And um, we've had some meetings with uh, with, with you know a few of y'all saying our Excel. And uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're you know looking forward to participating. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I, I just try to be brief about it. Yes, sir. How much is the membership for you? So. Uh, for businesses and uh, 
individuals, if it's uh, less than 10 uh, people, it's $275 a year. Uh, $330 for a medium business, 10 to 100 employees. Uh, and I think uh, larger corporations is $440. And, and some companies, they do want to have uh, an additional person, additional member. Uh, that's an additional $220 on top of whichever membership you have. So. Okay. And I think it's going to be a real good meeting with Chip Klein. That should be a really good one. <laughs> if you were at the first one, it should be yes. a good one. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Great. So we're putting the Atchafalaya name everywhere so that everybody realizes how important the Atchafalaya River is to the rest of the country. That's right. We, we felt it was important to have that in our, in our name, so uh, Atchafalaya mm -hmm. and Intracoastal. So right. uh, that's, that's the important parts of our area. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Haddad. Okay. We really appreciate you coming you. And, and, and talking about this. That's going to be a, a big help in the future. So we have um, we have Mayor Arthur here from Berwick, who will give us a little update, and then I guess um, uh, I guess Charlie will update us on the city after Mayor Arthur with Berwick. Okay, so what's been going on? Um, talking a little bit about proposed events. Uh, I'm not going to steal any of Colleen's thunder and let her. Whatever you want to say. No, 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 no. I. I uh, so we have, we have a lighthouse festival each year. It's gotten bigger and bigger thanks to Colleen and her group. They have done an excellent job of promoting it, and uh, it's grown leaps and bounds. And uh, people are looking forward to it each and every year. So it will continue on. She also um, got a, a runs the Friday Night Live. And again, we'll let her talk about that as to like, what, what that entails. If you've never been, it's really big. There are a lot of people showed up when the rhythms on the river kind of slowed down and they stopped doing it. We started doing this, and I'm going to tell you, got a crowd there. Really do. People like live music and dancing in the street. We got all that perfect. Um, shrimp Trolling Festival, we continue to support. Oregon City and the, the Shrimp Choice Festival and doing whatever we can to help them. And uh, right now we do the uh, Blessing of the Fleet in, uh, in Berwick. And we, we take all the depth to do that and to help them. Um, one of the things that I want to try to straighten out and try to work towards the future, Charlie, for uh, the 4th of July, let's start a little earlier on that instead of you know, and be kind of plan things. Absolutely. I don't mind taking part in Fourth of July celebrations, even if we don't do anything other than take part in the fireworks. Mm -hmm. But I would like to, you know, just like plan something. And uh, so we have some people that are, they'll, they'll, they'll make an event out of Fourth uh, of July. And, uh, I promise you that. So uh, I'd like to, let's just start up again, sharing the Fourth of July. That's okay. You talk to the lead and see what he thinks. Um, we did an inventory on our vehicles. Found out we had 38 vehicles. Well, we have 42 employees. <laughs> Something's wrong with that thing. So we uh, donated a vehicle to uh, Baldwin. They're in police departments in need of vehicles. So we donated a vehicle. One of our, one of our, actually, top notch vehicle and we let them have it and uh, we've ordered uh, two new police vehicles that should be coming in real soon and three new pickup trucks and uh, I say things are working out good for us. Okay. Um, signage started talking about and I put my foot in my mouth so I'm going to get back on it. Uh, that sign that we have over there uh, golden forms has really stirred the waters okay now i'm going to be buying signs for all mm -hmm. those subdivisions because they're saying well you got to sign for them <laughs> so uh, we, we're going to be putting signs out too most of our major subdivisions have already got signs and uh but you know we have some that uh, 
the Cantrell, Cantrell Heights. They, they were the first ones to call. So. Anyway, we're, we're working on that, getting some uh, signs. Um, we're installing sidewalks right now. This is the 2011 uh, DOTD grant for public safety for sidewalks and uh, they're putting sidewalks in our little part of town and those sidewalks will lead to the river to the cemetery to the library so we feel like it's uh, our older people or people that like to get out and walk i have a place to walk so they're that's on the way right now they're they're doing those we've got about uh, three streets done and uh so they're, they're, that's a, like I said, state grant. Um, we secured eight and a half acres of land behind the Civic Center. And uh, we're going to put a road back there. And it's for public safety. We have a lot of events at the Civic Center. And people are just, they don't want to walk too far. So they'll double park and they'll block off Patty to where you can't get a fire truck in there. So we need an alternate route. So we now have an alternate route. And we're in the process now of working on that road to have a road coming on the other side of the Civic Center. So we're excited about that for safety reasons. Um, February the 9th, we'll be opening bids for our Country Club Estates drainage project. That's a, about a million and a half dollars uh, drainage project to increase the size of the drainage pipe underneath the uh, four of the streets out there. Uh, it, it really needed to be done and we applied to the state, to DOTD on their flood project grant and uh, we were awarded a uh, million and a half dollars for it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, okay. Anybody have any questions about Murray? Sounds great. <laughs> Moving forward. That's great. Um, Charlie Solar, would you like to report on Morgan City? <laughs> uh, I don't have to. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, so, on behalf of the mayor, um, we've got a lot of progress going on. Uh, we're doing a lot of, I guess, the water plant. We were awarded a grant for the water plant for assistance from Hannah, but actually, the old administration put it, but they've been working on this for a long time, so it wasn't just, you know, we, Marble Lowe actually helped to fund it up, but we actually got the water sector on that, so that's a, about a $5 million project, and we're trying to up it to about a $9 million project to get a complete new water plant, but we're trying to do so a good, you know, 50 year fix, so none of us have to worry about drinking water for a long time. Water producing, the place is producing great water, it's just, it was built in the 50s, so I don't know. So, so we're excited about that. Um, hopefully the state does the start sooner and we'll be ready to go. In fact, bid might be going out as soon as the end of February. Um, we also applied for a sewer, a huge sewer grant because it's an old city. We've got a lot of, a lot of, you know, old, old pipes are filled up. We just try to make it get it better. Um, the walking trail is moving along. It is a slow process, obviously, because of the, the way the fund it is and, and the inflation, um, like she said, it was, the original bid was 120 and it went to 280 or something like that. But I think we should pretty much secure most of the funding. And there again, that's thanks to Excel. Those two ladies are the most persistent people out there in that <laughs> So I do thank y'all for everything I've been um, Other than that, I'm not real. What's that? Got a big Justice Street project going on. Uh, bear with us, be a couple more weeks, uh, weather permitting. But. Uh, <laughs> By the, by the time it gets finished, it'll be from 182, probably about three blocks, and that was a pretty rough section right there. One of the rough sections around, so Victor we're two. uh we're taking that. Victor two is in B. Victor two is next because of two quite a, a few areas. If you see paint on the ground, we're gonna fix all those holes. So if you see the little orange dots about big cracks that falling in, before it falls in, we're gonna try and fix it. You got at least <laughs> Duke Street, Sixth Street area. You passed through there. Quite a few holes that we that's right next to all this. So 
I have, I have a quick question and for a quick as quickly as y'all can answer because I know people are strapped for time. Um, I see all the work on Highway 70 with the, the pumping station and the parish is here, parish government's here, city government's here. What and Lake and Park's here, what exactly is the end game? What like if what is that, it gonna look like? That's just Y'all are closing the canal off. The pump station is on LA 70 right there. Those pumps will be moved to back, well, across from the lake in a big curve. You okay. can see it being Where the cranes are, right? Yeah, the canal okay. close off right at the lake and park. That'll, that'll seal the levee right there. They'll put a plug in right there. And all the water, I mean, the, the plan is all the water, probably about 60% of the city should go to that pump station if, if everything works perfect. So, okay. Um, I mean, it's, it's a huge station we got right there. It's, it's coming along very well. I mean, it's, I think they'll probably be pumping water. But the first set of pumps will probably be pumping as soon as. But we will be able to access. Or something like that. Yeah. We'll be able to access Lake and Park from that property. I mean, it, when it's okay. Yes, we'll uh, you, that walking trail will cross that road, okay. and you'll be able to ride your bike from Lakeside all the way to the all the way to the Bell Tower. Without, without crossing any type of roadway. And then back across the bridge, Highway 90 bridge to Berwick and Patterson too, right? right? We can do all that. Okay, great. Uh, is there a plan to repair a couple of those areas along the railroad avenue? You know, like from Grisafi to... Grisafi is bad, yeah. Well, from, yeah. from not Grisafi itself, but Railroad no, Avenue. No, Railroad Avenue, the, there's several of them. Yeah. More on Young's Road the, too. Yeah, the time for you know, to start Talked yeah. a little bit to Mike and different people and, and all. But yeah, there's a several spots which just got to be identified and done. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have enough yeah. yeah. black yeah. patch yeah. to go around yeah. building for that. Also, <laughs> <you're on> the <laughs> the <laughs> no, the road is yeah. not always fortunate to be able to do it. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you very much. And I'm going to introduce Aletha Abair. She was outside when um, we introduced everybody for Keep Saving Her Beautiful. Just a quick update on what the, she's been working on. Okay. The first quarter of 2023, we had three big projects. The first one is Love the Booth Week. It's going to be from April 17th through the 23rd. It's going to be a seven-day beautification. We're going to be picking up litter. We had this last year and what we tried to do is we tried to incorporate all the school kids because we know that if we can educate the kids, they will go home and educate their parents. And, and that's where the biggest hit is. Our goal is to create a clean Louisiana for future generations. We want to engage our community to clean up. We want to educate our citizens to change their behaviors and we want to make Love the Boot Week a stronger, sustainable movement. The second thing is Keep Louisiana Beautiful encourages all inter interested groups to join us, whether it is a small group or a large group, to clean up or beautify our area. We will provide the tools and the resources to support this event. I have asked or I have reached out to Hannah and to Sadie and we will have a big event April 17th through the 23rd. I look forward to everyone trying to participate or sending your kids out to participate. We will have social media and flyers going out to churches and schools, anyone that will support us. So I think last year we had over 150 participants. So again, we wanted to make it much larger this year. Our second event is something new, is a library project. And what Keep Louisiana Beautiful has done is we started reaching out to all of our librarians and this project is going to be like any other project in the, in, in the library system where you have to have a library card. And what we will do, we will supply these librarians with kits. It will be one kit will include one grabber, one vest, and two large trash bags. And the librarian will allow uh, people to come in, students, adults, come in and check out a kit. All we are asking is that you dispose of the litter, but you must check back in 
the, the grabbers and the uh, jacket. The library will be provided posters, displays, and bookmarkers to promote to, to promote this program. And last but not least, if you recall last year, Keep St. Mary Beautiful applied for a grant for five receptacles, and we were awarded those receptacles. This year, we have applied for 10 receptacles, and I received the word yesterday that we have been granted those receptacles. So that would be a total of 15 receptacles put here in the Morgan City area. Now, once we supply Morgan City, we will, we will move on to Berwick, <clears throat> Patterson, and on and on in St. Mary Parish. Now, Someone said a few minutes ago, let's get our house in order. Well, this is a good place for me to start. Keep St. Mary's Beautiful has been operating St. Mary Parish for the last 10 years without a staff, without a director, without funding. We are funded $500 a year from Keep Louisiana Beautiful. That is what we are operating on. We are here, we're gonna bring in all of these new people. Do you think they wanna to come to a, a parish where it's full of litter? Believe you me, we have litter throughout this parish. We have an abatement going out every week from the DA office in St. Mary Parish picking up trash. Every week, 20, 30 gallon bags of trash or more, that's the least amount. What I'm asking you today is to reach out to our parish councilmen and ask them to give us some support. We can do that. We can vote. <laughs> I am going to give you the impact of litter from last year. We operate from June to June. The trash. This is Louisiana. I am in a network of 40 affiliates. 95 are supported by their government only 5%, which unfortunately includes St. Mary Parish. Mm -hmm. I am asking for your help because it is not easy to try to keep this parish clean. <laughs> and we do not want people coming into our parish where it is fully littered. And there are areas here, you pass on that bridge and look down, you will see the litter. And it is hard for us to keep it clean. I am asking for your support. Thank you. <laughs> I've been getting bowl of wrong with his, his crew in a million picking up. I've been picking up personally myself. I get on the off ramps in a million and I'm gonna expand it elsewhere. I do this by all myself. Thank you. I, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. It's going to take all of us. Yeah. Well, but thank you for your support. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Something on that topic? Sure. Miss um, Aretha probably already knows because it was very exciting, at least to me. The legislature in 2022 passed a law that says that now photographic or videographic evidence of somebody littering or dumping is all you need to prosecute. Mm -hmm. so, However, it is hard for, for, for that to be carried out if you have to put your name down. That's why people do not do it, because to submit that, it requires a name. You have to submit your name, and not many people want to do that. I'm not afraid, but um, I have talked to DOTD about uh, the possibility of getting cameras installed on some of those ramps where it's a constant problem, where you probably picked up over and over and over, and it looks like you've never been there the next day. Um, 
Which would still be one ramp. Okay, so, so far so good. But um, the, the problem I'm running into, and maybe I can get some help from deer hunters, is this. When the ramp is curved, how do you put a camera up and catch the whole ramp? It might take multiple cameras. It might take one camera high up in a tree. I don't know. But um, if you know of people with creative ideas, tell them to contact me because this is where we are in that, in uh -huh. that um, That's good. idea. That's good. Great. That's great. I was going to say, like the chamber, couldn't we get um, that week? to send and encourage the businesses to well, get their people to, to clean I up. I wrote down that we, I would like to partner with you guys to make it a parish-wide event. I know Franklin has their own initiative. We, we all do it in conjunction together. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could get all of the cities involved to do something specific, even if it's not on the same day. Right. Well, um, in light of what you said, um, I, we have reached out and the uh, the only uh, city that has uh, not been receptive is Franklin. Okay. They, they, they like to do things on their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still get their schools like Hanson and, and Franklin Junior High, they uh, participate. But for the city itself, they, they, they seem to want to stand alone. No, but if you can try to, yeah. to get them, that, no, that's fine. I was fine. just thinking like that week to say, you know, Hey, um, Conrad Industries, can you get your employees to go out and clean during this week yeah, around your, your business? Like a social yeah, they, media push. Yeah. And you yeah. Take a picture of your employees with They do that. Yeah. Bag. Right. 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 That's great. Maybe win something. Yeah, they don't want to pay for their employees to be there on <laughs> yeah. that Saturday. People like food, though. Well, oh, when. <laughs> When we had McDermott, McDermott exactly. used to yeah, really to be a pusher job. for that. Oh, man, can we get these companies to educate their workers about throw, you know, the whole group, not to throw them around? Everybody I, I'll be w willing to go over there and help educate them. <laughs> well, we will definitely have you educating them on YouTube. So this will be this will be posted, and uh, I would also yeah. like to say that this um, Keep Louisiana Beautiful grant. There was a trash receptacle one, as she mentioned, um, that we were awarded. We were also awarded the beautification side of it. Um, so we got about five thousand dollars for our city employees to go and redo the um, landscaping around all four welcome signs in the city around the Fountain of Lawrence Park and in front of City Hall with the City Hall sign. So we are very much looking forward to supporting yeah. the and, and in light of what you just said, that's the advantage that the city has on keep St. Mary beautiful because that's a reimbursable. And there's no way we could come up with money up front to pay for such a thing. We would love to if we had the support, but yes. And the other thing on beautification, I haven't seen it in any of the other cities to the degree of Morgan City, and I've said this before, empty signs post that are along 182 and Business 90. Go look to see how many signs are empty. They're these old sign posts that are just there. They are cluttering up the road. Just notice. It's an eyesore, and it's, you know, I don't know how you... A business that's no longer there, I mean, do they inherit? Like, if I buy a business, do I inherit this sign that needs to be cut There's down? Sign ordinances. I think they would have to, buy. to some degree they do. I know one business in particular, their sign is so tall and it's an old sign that it's a huge expense to even get it down or someone would have to literally cut it, the sign off the top of the pole, bring it down to redo it or even get rid of it and it's just a huge expense. We've talked about that a little bit since you and yeah. I Yeah, you that. noticed them? Yeah. Oh yeah, now that you mentioned it, they, they, <clears throat> you can't not see them anymore. But anyway, I, I, I work with Lee, a little dynamo down there. <laughs> but uh, let's keep saying very beautiful. Uh, we had uh, talking about using uh, companies. Um, Rouses is a good example. If you all know the rule between Rouses and the vacant lots behind McDonald's, always paper in there. So one of the things we did, we reached out with the, to the landowner, thanks to Lou, and Lewis, and we had uh, him pick up the litter before he mowed the lawn, or the, the open space there, because when you mow it, when there's litter there, now you got 5,000 pieces instead of only 500. 
uh, Ross, who also now has their employees go out and uh, clean up along the side of the building, and that's been a big help. They've uh, repaired the, the uh, put some more concrete in the back of the office with a dump, uh, building where dumpsters are. So that's been a real big help for us. So we do, we still sort of engage people, but it's just where there's just a couple of us here, it takes a lot of doing to get out around people. But also we have cigarette butt cans, the nice little metal cans, black about that high with an inner liner. If anybody would like one of those to put around, I meant to talk to you the other day, give you someone I suppose when we were speaking. But, uh, uh, we, uh, they lock up and you can take the can out and dump the cigarette butts out. So if anybody wants some of those cans, they can just get a hold of me and uh, I'll drop them off to you. All right. Moving right along, go ahead. Well, uh, Carrie, it would update us on, um, I guess the branding yes. is probably the most important thing. Um, um, so we started the project shortly before COVID. Um, and so we had to, to stop because we couldn't meet and we couldn't have it. Anyway, we hired a, a company by the name of Chandler Thinks. They are, um, they are professional in destination um, branding. We did a branding refresh. We, we, we said we didn't want to throw everything out um, and we wanted something that we could phase, um, but the timing was right. Um, they came in, they did uh, a tour of St. Mary Parish they did 21, 28 interviews. We did four uh, focus groups with almost 50 people, uh, a lodging survey, restaurants they visited. We did an online uh, perception study and a digital audit. Um, what they came up with, uh, the feedback was that Cajun Coast brings to mind good food, Cajun culture, cypress trees, and music. Uh, the tur biggest tourism draw are outdoor related, good food, unique towns, and history. Our waterways, food, and festivals are what makes us prominent. And so, um, basically, as they looked over everything that, that our inventory and our destination, um, they came back and um, the brand story is basically um, to embrace the mystery of our waterways. The Atchafalaya Basin has this uh, sort of mystique about it. Um, our waterways um, are mysterious and um, they've encouraged us to embrace that. So um, I should have done a, a nice presentation. Um, but I, I, I've been out of pocket, most of you know, went on vacation in the holidays and my husband was in the hospital. So I'm, I'm very discombobulated. But anyway, so we are, um, we updated our logo and we are mystically beautiful. And um, our brand story is sort of captivating history, magical, natural wonders, evocative stories, um, fairy tale settings, wildlife, mind boggling wildlife, uh, spellbinding tales. So what we're doing is we're embracing the mystique of uh, our natural environment. And um, you know, there was a lot of talk about whether we wanted to go with mystique, um, but it is it is engaging, and um, and we're going with these big bold pictures of the swamps and the waterways, um, people fishing as the sun's rising and the sun's setting, um, those sort of things. So, um, and our new logo includes still includes the egret, um, but it's sort of flying. Um, our old logo was beautiful. I thought it was fantastic, but it doesn't translate to digital anymore. <laughs> Um, so that was one of the main reasons that we did. Um, it sort of, and there's like a whole page of the brand story about um, our wildlife <coughs> and, our, and our, our stories to tell. So um, if you need a new logo from us, please let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to send that to you. Um, if you'd like a whole copy of the whole branding report, I'll be happy to email that to you. Um, it was a fun process. At times it was my <coughs> Um, but we're trying to reach out to all of our publics and, um, and get their input on that. So anyway, the other thing that Cindy talked about was um, there's a group out of Lafayette that wants to do a hiking trail from North Louisiana to South Louisiana. Um, 
there's um, kind of like the Appalachian is it the Appalachian yeah, Trail? It is, Appalachian Trail. I don't even like to drive that far, so I'm not about to hike that far. <laughs> but um, there seems to be a market for that, and what they want to do is they want to um, connect existing trails that they have um, and then do the infrastructure for things that, um, that we don't have. And so we had a first meeting yesterday um, to try to do that. Again, you know, it's not my thing. It's hard for me to, um, I will be supportive. I will do anything that they ask us to do. Um, so we, Mike was there and he was very helpful with the levy. Um, you know, like we talked about how are you gonna get across waterways? I mean, it's beautiful, but how do you get across waterways? Um, the sun. So if you're on a levy and you don't have any protection from the sun, um, what do you do? Um, so. We had an interesting conversation, and, and so um, well, he's very work in progress. He's very persistent, so he will be back. Yes, yeah. so, so that's Rotary great. Club yeah. right, right. of um, 6200, which is the Lafayette area, they started taking this project overall to try to get it going. And basically what they want to do is divide the state up into regions. And then, so say we would have the Atchafalaya Hiking um, Association, and we would be responsible for sort of quote unquote maintaining. These trails would maintain themselves to most, you know, but like if they needed a sign um, that you could apply for grant funds within that that commission that you have, that regional uh, component. So anyway, they're excited and um, yeah, exciting. Very exciting. To do that. Right. Thank you for keeping the data. Now, Evan's not here, but no, basically his economic... No, we've already... Right, we're not going to talk about that again, but Colleen um, and Beth and Sadie, we were hoping possibly first Colleen on Berwick Main Street, some things that you've been... Ideas? Um, okay, so first, we're not Main Street. We don't qualify. I didn't mean Main Street. I'm sorry. I'm we sorry. are only focusing on our cultural district, <clears throat> which entails the food truck court. Um, we have had such great progress and turnout with that that two of our trucks have now opened restaurants. <laughs> oh, great! Right that's, that's the fraternity. Like, it's great for them because you know it was bodied by Thomas. He's in Homa now, and the oh. Southern Strad is now in I can't remember Egrath or something like that. Oh. Um, they may come back periodically, but they did so well that now you know i guess that's the end goal jones is still there asian cajun still there the snowball stand and we're working on a couple other ones so if you know anyone please let us know um we've already tried the taco trucks they're not going anywhere they're all probably parking for free and they're not going to pay our price right. which we went down on um it's basically five dollars a day to park there park our place we pay for a month um so that's going really well. There's some a couple of things we want to do. We wanted to add like a little awning over like the little stage area where we have live bands. We're gonna crank up some more um, food truck Friday um, with a band and get people, the community to come in. Cause everybody loves bands. I mean, it's just, it's just a thing or acoustic or whatever. Um, eventually I want to paint the wall behind the stage at the food point. <laughs> Yeah, I think I told you that, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's doing really well. Please go support them. They work so hard. The Jones guy is, that is his restaurant. That is what he calls it. He basically is our park ranger. He takes care of everything. He blows it down. He, he does everything. He opens and closes the toilet for the day and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah please try to support them as much as you can and if you know of anybody that is interested just tell them to get with me or call the time um second thing i just wanted to touch base on is we are almost done with the pickleball courts under the bridge if you haven't been by it's very lit up at night I, there, there's no way anybody's gonna get hurt in there because there's it's fenced in it's it's really pretty it turned out really nice. there's even bleachers out there um so in addition to having the courts inside of the Civic Center, we have them outside now. Um, that was Kevin Avery that pushed that. That was his baby. Um, I'm not sure how much is left on that to start. Uh, it's about 98% complete. That's uh, 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we also have our library. If you haven't passed by, please do so. It is beautiful. We are the last library in the entire parish to ever be redone. So I'm pretty excited about that because I've been I was in the school system for 17 years and I always I didn't even know about Berwick Library because I mean, you know at one point I didn't even know there was one in Berwick, but we needed it badly and it's beautiful just pass by and so the front entrance is opposite now the front entrance used to be by the elementary school now it's on fourth street the back of it is it's just pretty just go by and look at it um also we're doing the live after five every friday in april again um we already started kind of lining up our bands and um the food and all that good stuff so y'all can make that that all it really turned out well last year. We used the pavilion as a bandstand, and like he said, people like to dance in the streets. We we do have an advantage. And my suggestion to the Strong Family Festival, y'all should just put it all on the street. So you don't have to worry about slushing. Just my little, that's my little two cents. Put your bandstand on the street. Um, because people love to dance. You don't have to worry about wet grass and all that. But that is one of our biggest draws in Berwick is the music and the, the food and, you know, the people that come in with the food. We, have, we only have one restaurant. Um, also, the carnival, Max Carnival, is coming in April. So that kind of can, that kind of goes with our live after five on two of the Fridays. So two of them will be able to people will be able to bring their children and they can do um, the carnival. Um, I also can put Fourth of July on there, but I did want to point out that the. The fireworks, if we did do it again, because I I own a business in Berwick and I'm right next to the water. And yes, I did, I had people come over to my business because it's my job. But that's a huge thing to move. I mean, that's just my opinion. When it moved to the lake, it, it just, it disappointed a lot of people on our side. I know I was upset about it, and I'm sure y'all know that. But anyway, it does affect businesses also because those people are all gravitating to the river. They're getting on the wall. They're getting, um, they're getting drinks. They want to eat. So why, why can't we coordinate again? Just that one little entity. Have everything over there at your lake and all that. That's just my point of view. Am I stepping? Am I overstepping? Okay. Um, so yes, it, it does affect everyone in the um, two areas. Um, we had talked about before the, I say the Old Bridge, before the Old Bridge closes, we wanna do a couple of more walk, bike rides, so maybe we can get together on that to coordinate. Cause that was such a great, yeah. people love doing yeah. that. I mean, it's great. People I love riding my bike over that bridge. Me I too. Know, it was just yeah. fun, you know, and then we, we, I would drive a, I would ride my bike and we'd go to Sweet and Simple and get like a coffee mm -hmm. or people were going to CC's and it's just, it's fun to collaborate with both towns. Um, I guess that's about it. Did I forget anything? What about the mural? And the, the mural. Uh, okay. Yeah, we have the mural. Sidewalks. The sidewalks. Yeah, that was the first thing on the list. So our next, um, like I said, we're, we're concentrating on being a cultural district because we're not Main Street, we're not historic. Um, so when Kevin and Monty came down here, I'm sure you all know who that was, that was one of their suggestions for our corners, our crosswalks downtown Berwick, like where the food court is, where my business is, all down First Street and possibly just going out. And I've already had Central Catholic reach out to me. They want to be a part of it. Berwick High School wants to be a part of it. I want, we want the community. We don't want to just go, and this is not sponsored. This is, we're not getting sponsors. We're not asking for money. It just, it's just the community, just coming together and painting some fun stuff on crosswalk. So it would be like all four. And then they, they suggested adding a bump out to each one because our street on First Street is so wide. People just go through the stop, the, the uh, stop signs all the time. So. They were saying that when you when you put those crosswalks, it's an illusion and it makes people stop. Mm -hmm. and, and and then you have bump outs on each mm -hmm. side and you could put, he said like you could put planners on each four corners so that it shortens the streets up a little bit. Anyway, that's one of our next projects. So I'm excited that people have reached out to me already. 
about that. We had already talked about painting the stairs um, on the wall, and I also, I don't know, this, is a, this is your question. I really want to get the Canton Street big mural thing behind my building. Paint, like, can we paint that? I forget to ask you why. Okay. <laughs> so, like, we have these big, it's like a sunburst behind my building, and it's just yuck. It's just it's ugly, so I want it to be pretty for no, you know, pictures and stuff. Right, obviously. Yeah, so we're just trying to make it pretty, and and the mural was a hit. And people send me pictures all the time. They're they're tagging us. It's exciting. You know, we still have the signs that the ten people had done. We we probably need to touch some of them up because they're kind of getting a little janky. But um, other than that, you know, if you know anybody that would be interested in bring in a class. Oh, we also, um, what's the Hope, what is the name of the group? Hope, what well, about Hope Words? Hope the store. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, no it's the school thing, the, the girl that, the suicide Hope thing. Uh, Hope, Hope Squad. Squad, thank you. They are interested in also coming help. So I, I, I'd like to get <laughs> the kids involved in this and not worry about, I mean, well, we ask for so much money all the time. I can't, I can't. I'm doing that for the Lighthouse Festival. I ask for money all the time. I cannot go to people and say, can you give me money for paint and do this? So we, we're working on our own thing. Um, so if you know anybody interested, just let us know. And I guess that's about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you. And it, I know we're, we're, we're going long on time, but it's everybody gets together. It's been so long, and there's so many ideas, and it's exciting that everybody's working so hard. Um, so I, I think... Can I finish off with one? I, I failed to mention it when I mentioned the fact that uh, Jan, uh, 2011 was the sidewalk grant, mm -hmm. and it was done. Sam Jones is here, and he was the state mm -hmm. representative at the time, and kind of pushed that through it wasn't i wasn't the mayor at that time Louis okay. Radcliffe was and uh, he helped them big time and i want, I want to say thank you right. thank you thank you mr jones okay yeah, but, Carol, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you were you were, uh that you were state representative in 2011. i i, I didn't know it's a long time ago yeah. <laughs> the wheels of uh <clears throat> that so I wanted to I would like to give Sadie a chance to talk about Main Street and what's going on with Main Street Sadie is the new Main Street director Morgan City and then um, oops I'm sorry Beth we'll talk about the market scheduling from the Chamber of Commerce so I just put together a list of our um, functions that we're gonna have this year um, first up is Easter's come in right around the corner so we're gonna have an Easter egg hunt in Lawrence Park on March 25th um, we reach out to communities around us, but there's, you know, we have so many cities and towns that it's hard to coordinate every single thing. Um, so I think I was told Patterson will be having an Easter egg hunt. The Aviation Museum will be having it on the same day. Um, also on the 25th is Brew Fest, which I'm sure you'll talk about. Um, so I'll, I'll let Beth go over that one. Uh, we have Porch Fest. April 22nd, that's actually Kiwanis, but it will be in um, Lawrence Park. And on April 22nd, which Ms. Lee was talking earlier, is going to be our uh, tentatively our beautification day. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the day that we're going to set aside. What day? Say? It's um, April 22nd, the Saturday. Oh, so that'll be the same day as the Porch Fest. Correct. Okay. I, I'm hoping it doesn't pull, I'm hoping Porch Fest doesn't pull too many people away. Once again, it was, um, no, you know, just. Work. We together. have to do the beautification in a time frame, and Porch Fest was already scheduled, so it's um, but it's at eight o'clock in the morning. Porch Fest is normally eleven a.m. until eight p.m. They are talking about doing a five k that morning, so it may pull a few people away. But I think with the schools and community, we'll have plenty enough people to help us um, with the cleanup. And then um, on my list, I do have Fourth of July. The only thing I'll say about that is last year when I came on. The fireworks weren't scheduled yet, so we had to do that. We could not do them on the 4th of July because they were already booked for then. So we had to do it on the Saturday. And um, some people did complain about it not being on the 4th of July. So all I know at this point is that they will be on the 4th of July, um, which is a Tuesday. Um, I am talking about possibly doing having a little party like we do before the fireworks on the Saturday. Uh, just because people like to do fourth of july activities barbecue be in their boats all that kind of stuff on fourth of july they're off for that day and normally you know they like to do things that they've already done for years so 
I don't, and like I said, this is just kind of tentatively, I haven't gotten anything approved yet, but I do know that the fireworks will be on Tuesday, the 4th of July. Um, trunk or treat, Beth started whenever she was there and it's a huge success. It was very easy just to step in and take over because it, you know, she already had everything down packed. So that is, I, from what I'm looking at, it's been the weekend before Halloween. Um, so we will continue that this year. It will be October 21st, and that's from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., and that's Trunk or Treat. Um, Moonlight Monday was kind of handed over to a few of the shop owners in the Main Street area on Front Street. We keep it that way, but we kind of partner in with them. So that is, um, this is tentatively also. This past year, we moved it, and the turnout wasn't quite as large, so I think we're going to go back to the Monday before Thanksgiving, which this year is going to be November 20th. And that's for Moonlight Monday. Um, that's 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then something new that we started this year um, that I'm very proud to work with the group that I did was our Christmas festival. It was, it was a great festival. Thank you very thank you. much. That was our, um, like I said, it was our first er ever Christmas festival. Uh, we named it the Spirit of Morgan City after the shrimp boat so that we could kind of pull in different activities throughout the Christmas season go with the spirit of Morgan City and um, so the shrimp boat lighting is always Thanksgiving night um, so we will always have ours that Saturday just to kind of start off the Christmas season um, this past year we lit some of the oaks I don't know if anyone here has seen them or not but we lit some of the oaks that was um, a huge success thanks to some of our local uh, companies to light the trees I had no idea what the cost would be. And uh, once we started researching, it was way more than I thought. Um, because we had never done the festival before, we didn't really have anything in the budget, so we reached out to some local companies. Um, G&J sponsored a tree, um, LAD sponsored a tree, and then um, B&G Foods sponsored three trees. To sponsor a tree is $2,000 a tree between the lights, because they're commercial grade lights, and they take way more lights than you would even imagine. Um, and then we have to get power to those trees because there's no power in the park other than, you know, that the outskirting. So it's $2,000 a tree. And like I said, very thankful to those companies. We already, um, at the festival, people were coming up like, how much is it we want to participate? So we already have three more sponsors for this festival coming up this year. Um, we have great expectations. We're hoping to grow just a little bit every year. Um, we. My favorite part was using the old buildings that we had downtown. So Mrs. Claus went into the library. She read stories. It was story time with Mrs. Claus. Uh, they were able to write letters to Santa in the library. We had a, a mailbox outside of the, the library for them to put in the mail. And then all of those letters were answered and um, mailed back to the kids that wrote them. So we were very happy with the outcome. The weather was terrible and we still had way more people than we could have imagined. So um, that'll happen this year, November 25th, which is the Saturday at five o's Thanksgiving. Um, the tentative times are four to six. We may go a little bit longer because, um, I, you know, like I said, I think it's gonna grow a lot. And then um, we'll finish it up with live music starting at 6.30. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. The trees are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I do want to mention uh, the, the lights will um, come down starting either Wednesday or Thursday. So if you have not seen the lights and you want to, if you've seen pictures, it does no, no justice to being in the park with those lights lit. So we were very, very happy with the outcome. I was hoping it was a year-round thing. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's very, it's very, very pretty. But I don't think, like, um, we had Santa in the gazebo with Mrs. Claus, and we had a lighting ceremony. So he kind of did his little Christmas magic. He blew the glitter and the lights lit up. I think that would take away from, it, it's not going to be as special, I don't think, if we keep them up all year. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, um, uh, already out of like 10 light strands because the squirrels eat them. So, I was able to get one of those squirrels. <laughs> Thank you, Sadie. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Beth, and then I think Cindy will finish with Port. I have more than just the market. Um, how many of y'all have been through Leadership St. Mary? What, what is she? Leadership St. Mary. I'm going to get everybody out. <laughs> Eventually. Um, our class this year is pretty small. We have eight 
as of right now, possibly other people that will be going through it. We are starting to offer a monthly payment option because it is expensive to go through the program, but it really gives you an in-depth look, look of the parish. Everyone who's been through it has learned an extensive amount of things that they didn't know before. You make great networking connections through the program. Um, I went through it myself in 2015, and we're kind of revamping it this year to not only be a highlight reel, but also for the people that we visit to hear kind of where there's gaps that need to be filled because at the end of the year, each graduating class comes up with a class project. And for example, a successful class project in the past was starting the welding program at SLCC. That was through the, the leadership the machine, class. Yeah, it was the machine shop. The machine shop, okay. Yes. Um, so, and that helped fill the gap in the community. There was a need for that. So that's what we're trying to gear it more towards so the class will know where help's needed, what they can point their project to. Um, it is $750 to go through. It's a 12 month commitment. We're starting a little bit late, so they'll have two days in February this year and then one field day per month after that. What's the cutoff for that to sign up this year? It was last Friday, but I'll extend it. Okay. <laughs> Um, we won't be starting until February 13th is our first okay. actual day, and it's an after-hours event that night. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole year because our calendar is pretty full. I'll go through the next couple of months. February 1st, we have a luncheon with Stephen Wagaspach at Petroleum Club. Uh, we'll probably, today would usually be our cutoff, but if anybody else wants to go, we'll, we'll accept still on Monday. Uh, February 23rd is our annual banquet. It's at Nico Bella this year. It's only at the casino. We had to move it. The casino's not able to take us right now. So hopefully we can move it back there in the future. But there we honor like our Citizen of the Year, Business of the Year, um, the Donna Minor Leadership Award, those kind of people. Try not to skip anything. March 29th, we have the Legislative Breakfast, which is going to be at the Forest in Franklin from 8, 8 o'clock in the morning until 9.30. And it's with Senator Island, Representative Amity, and St. Law. They come and kind of tell us what they're going to be going into session for. And then we also have a, a post-session wrap-up when, they, when they're finished. We do have Brewfest. I'll touch on that. It's going to be on March 25th. This will be the fifth annual Basin Brewfest. It's something that kind of an offshoot of Morgan City Main Street. It's still a partnership with the city of Morgan City. And it was initially started to raise funds to renovate Lawrence Park. Um, we're benefiting the kids of the city. Um, but it is a great festival. Last year was our biggest festival that we've had. Coming back from 2020 when we had to shut down the week of the festival, uh, we were kind of worried that we wouldn't be able to make profit last year and we still profited right under $10,000. Um, and that's all going to the park fund to be saved for whatever we decide next there. Um, this year, I can almost promise that our profit is gonna be higher than that because we've got a great response to sponsors. We invite breweries, commercial breweries from only the state of Louisiana, which there are over 40 breweries now, quite a few popped up during COVID. They come, they set up a booth, and if you buy a ticket to enter Brewfest, you get to sample a limited amount of beer samples. They're two ounces, but there's all different kinds of beer to sample. We have a homebrew competition with local people. It's fun. <laughs> it's all craft beer. Um, we have live music. We partner with a 501c3 group to bring awareness to what their work, to what they're doing. The last two years have been local animal rescues. Uh, this year again is an animal rescue. If you guys saw the video of the girl in the river this past week, she's our partner this year in the area creature rescue. Uh, they will be there with some adoptable animals and if you <coughs> donate to them, you get a beer on us from the tap trailer. We're bringing back, originally I had a restaurant call, crawl portion to it. We, it didn't work out the way we wanted it to, so we had gone to us preparing the food. This year we're gonna try to have a food court under the bridge that's open to the public. The 
Brewfest itself is you have to have a ticket to get in and you have to be 21. We don't allow anybody younger than 21. We've even had people ask, well, what about a kid in a stroller? You gotta be 21 to get in. Um, but the food truck portion of it, the food court will be open to the public to hopefully draw people to the area. Uh, we will be having spring market on April 1st, April Fool's Day. We're hoping to launch a lunch and learn in March with Garisco Marketing. We're gonna try to do them quarterly starting off and if they're successful, we'll build on that. But we're probably gonna do one on this end of the parish and then one on the west end of the parish knowing that lunchtime is a hard time for people to be able to get away and travel. April 22nd, we're trying to bring in a new event that will be parish-wide called the Monet Day, which fosters entrepreneurship in the youth. Um, we'll have to get sponsors, and we, I have more information on that, but it is basically allowing children to come to the chamber as a loan agent to sponsor some kind of small business, whether it be a lemonade stand, a cookie stand, jewelry, whatever. Um, and then there will be one day where parish-wide, these little businesses pop up all over the place and the parish goes out to support them. Um, there is some things that we're working out with the tax office as far as if, what kind of licensing they need. Uh, <laughs> you gotta put up some money first. Yeah. Um, they're they're yeah. exempt for from some things because there actually is a lemonade law because other chambers have done this, um, and it's it's been a great success. And if it grows and develops the way that we hope, um, for example, Starkville's Chamber of Commerce has a pilot program for the winning small business to where they'll help build that business into something greater. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So we hope great. it works. <laughs> great. Uh, the Black Bear Festival is supposed to be coming back this year in Franklin. They don't have a date. It's going to be set for the spring at some time. And then in April, we will hopefully be hosting all of our five mayors for a luncheon. And we're going to call it Mayors of Progress in the future. We're hoping that will be our kind of first luncheon of the year in February. We did it last year, had all of you come. And give an update, state of the city address, kind of. Uh, and we're gonna do that again. It'll be a little bit later this year when we can it. But in the future, we want it to be the first the first luncheon of the year. And I think that's it for me. Thank you, Beth. Thank you very much. And uh, Cindy's here from the port, and, and uh, the director, Max, snuck in back there. He's in the back, and Cindy's going to update us on. But he's going to let me talk. So yes. I, I can talk. And I know you're, I'm the last thing between you and the door, so I'm going to be real quick. Oh. But um, basically, our channel is in very good shape right now. We are getting by Shane dredged, which we have not had a dredge in there since 2010. They will be dredging to 20 feet. With the current funding, we have not to the 400 feet wide, but we're still working on that. Um, and also the, uh, the bar channel where we have the special purpose dredge that's working out there to agitate and, and manage the fluff. Um, it's looking pretty promising that we'll be having a new contract soon with Bryce Civil Constructor, keeping our fingers crossed because you never know when you're working with the core from one day to the next. So um, we did, you know, in order to, to, to keep the channel open, we have to have consistent funding. And so that's what we continue to work on. We met with Colonel Colin Jones um, the day that, that AIC had your first meeting. He came by to meet with us to see what our needs were. And we're also working with stakeholders. So all of the channel users, we ask for support letters when we send in our requests. It's, um, it's time for the annual work plan to be announced. We have the president's budget. And then, in, and then later on in the year, they announced the work plan for this for this year. So we are working on that right now. I'm working on our annual report that we usually send out or our message to the stakeholders. And I usually try to hold off until we have, um, until we're notified as to what our work plan dollars will be. I, I'm hearing it could be March. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to hold off that long, but we're hoping to, because that's usually the biggest news is what the money that we're getting. So um, so I, I send that out every year along with a lot of other communications. And so a lot of you in this room are getting this information, but I have cards. And if there's anybody else that wants to be added to our distribution list, 
grab a card from me and I'm going to um, send me an email and I'll make sure that you're added to the appropriate list so that you can get information from us as well. Um, there's going to be a lot more detail on our report, but one of the things that, um, that I wanted to mention is on our website, we're working on an interactive map. So if you go to the map, it's going to, you can click on the little icon for fuel docks or for a shipyard or whatever the case may be. It'll bring that shipyard or that fuel dock up and give you some basic information. It'll give you some contact information. Um, and so you can, um, we get calls sometimes that, you know, what, what's a good fuel dock, whatever. We don't like to recommend. So we can say, you can go to our map, there's this many fuel docks or there's this many shipyards or whatever. So check that out. It's still a work in progress. And so check it out though when you have an opportunity. We're at www.portofmc.com. Um, what we want to do next is be able to any industrial properties that are vacant on the waterway is what we want to start with. Um, I get requests for proposals from Louisiana Economic Development, and if you're not in that in that database for the properties, then you really can't submit anything. Now, so far, nothing that I've gotten fits what we have here, but but I would like to be prepared, you know, and that's only within our port district. I'm not going outside of our district to do this. It's only within our jurisdiction that, that we're going to put the available properties and, and so I, I did want to visit with you a little bit on that too, with on the Berwick side. So um, I think that's it. As I said, give me grab my card and I'll be happy to um, send you any other information that you like. Okay. Um Cindy, that was fast. Thank you. I did that. Oh, oh, that's what I forgot to say. One of the things that we sent out, um, requesting information from one of the one of the facilities, we actually got a response back this morning saying thank you for doing this for our businesses and helping us to promote economic development. So we don't get many. We all know that not many kudos, and so it's really nice when you get that. So okay. now I'm done. <laughs> oh, thanks, Cindy. Um, and, and Sam, can I get you in one second? One second. Uh, Mike, I just want to throw this real quick at you about the levy real quick. Like, what's happening with the 100-year the flood protection in Lakeside? Is there anything? Um, it's still really okay. trying to figure out the best alternatives. Okay. Um, again, inflation has kind of beat us up on our projects. The, the project costs have doubled. Uh, okay. So we're still... Kind of okay. Figuring things out, so to speak. Okay. And, and did y'all find the model from the lake of the levee? No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, liaison to the governor's office, um, our former uh, councilman, St. Every Jones. Time, every time I come here, I think about this was the first project that I got funded when I got to Baton Rouge, this building. And it was, it was, the, it was, designed to to be a cat five which it is and the objective was to keep the uh corps of engineers here they left but they came back um i want to talk about the bridges they're gonna they're gonna close the old bridge which was supposed to be the first bridge but they argued that we had to fix the new bridge so we did it's going to close probably in the next 60 to 90 days and it's going to be completely closed they're going to do the work uh, it'll probably take two years, which means probably four. It depends on uh, on, on the, the speed of, of the contractor. But I did get a call the other day about the bridge out here going to Amelia that's been a one one lane mm -hmm. for a while. And um, what, what, what I found out was we have someone that's designing the repair of it and a reconstruction of it. They should be, they're about 75% finished. They should be finished in the next uh, three, four months. Then they'll go out for bids in in the uh, in the end of this year. So that's all I have. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Right. And thank you for your assistance <laughs> with this building because this has also been a very positive experience for us. When it was a mind-numbing amount of money that was asked for, <laughs> but I quickly caught up to speed that I was in a place that has a mind-numbing amount of money sometimes. And you know what I tell people when they come in and say, my tax dollars are paying for this? I'm like, yeah, and they stay here instead of going to another carriage. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank everyone. Uh -huh. We ran a little long. We just thank you, thank you, thank you.
You might have noticed there's a few things we listed. We're just going to keep them there until we figure things out. But by collaborating, I think things are moving forward. So thank everyone for attending. And please take a Ted Lasso biscuit before you leave. Those are Ted Lasso biscuits. I'm not saying they're as good as the program, but you need to believe. Oh, yeah.